Okay, um, this is uh, uh, a talk about uh, observability using Kepler. Uh, to, Kepler is a tool to, to measure the energy consumption of applications, and and uh, it's a partnership between IBM and Red Hat that this work started. And I'm going to introduce the main architecture of Kepler. And Sally has been working on enabling open telemetry metrics to export Kepler metrics, especially on the edge use case. Okay, just just for a quick introduction, what you're going to expect from this talk, um, have some motivations, and then talk about what Kepler is, and then we are going to ex you know to introduce what we have been doing for open telemetry with Kepler for the edge computing and a short demo. Just a, you know like some motivation about why to to measure the energy consumption. So first of all, there is also just you know, topics about you know climate change is important, and reduce the CO2 emissions. Also, if people are not really in, uh, you know concerned about the the climate environment now, but uh, reduce the energy consumption is something important for data centers. It's also cost. It's and and uh, the data centers it has a big chunk of energy consumption and uh, also the CO2 emissions. Uh, in the world, uh, plus there are uh, currently there is uh, some uh, governments, especially in the European Union, pushing some of the companies to report the energy consumption for the AI workloads. So measuring the energy consumption, it's becoming something more important than than before. And then the problem is how we can measure the energy consumption on the cloud or um, on pl public and private cloud, how we can do that. And what's the energy consumption of workloads that I was mentioning? Uh, it's something that it's become important now to, to understand that. And also once the user can understand what's the energy consumption, there are some techniques to try to minimize the energy consumption. Um, and and also the CO2 emissions, because CO2 emission is a little bit not linear with the energy consumption because it depends on the factor, what's the energy source. And, uh, and then how to attribute the energy consumption to containers on the cloud or to pods, how to aggregate that. And Kepler is the project that is doing that. So what's the Kepler project right now? So it's become a CNCF sandbox project and recently and it's a project, again, to measure the energy consumptions, to try to minimize the environment impact of uh, uh, workloads on the cloud, and, uh, and also to identify this, the possible uh, scenarios, what's the opportunity to uh, reduce the CO2 emissions. So Kepler is the main project, but it, there are some side projects that it's related to Kepler. Uh, the main one is the power, power exporter, that is the, the main repository. However, we have another one that is the model server to create power models for public cloud where we don't have real-time power metrics. We have the model database and other, uh, the operator, and also the Clever, which um, it's uh, a, a project that it's dynamically changed the CPU frequency to save energy for the workloads and picks with its uh, Kubernetes scheduler also to be aware about um, you know the energy consumption of the workloads and also CO2 emissions. For example, different times, uh, it has like uh, using uh, different uh, CO2 emissions, also different locations. So the scheduler can, that can be aware about that in a cluster, a big cluster can optimize things. Okay, so the Kepler community, it's, uh, it's growing now. Uh, there are a lot of IBM and Red Hat. We start with that. Uh, we have a lot of folks from uh, Intel that are discussing that. Not There are some that are not, just the only people that are contributing to PRs in the main repository, but there are more people here uh, that it's, uh, it's uh, contribute to the discussion to the project and are just not here, so sorry if I didn't include the names. Um, and again, so there are some companies that are 
helping uh, through the open source. Okay, the Kepler. The Kepler, uh, the name comes from Kubernetes based efficient power level exporter. Uh, we have uh, another, uh, it can run standalone outside Kubernetes, but it's in the beginning was created only for Kubernetes, so that's what, it has Kubernetes in the name. So it actually collects software and hardware counters to measure the, the resource utilizations for the, uh, for the process level. And we also collect the power consumption of the, uh, the hardware uh, uh, in, the, in the bare metal node. And if it's in the, uh, in the environment that we cannot collect the, the, the real-time power consumption from the hardware, we use power models. And export these metrics to Prometheus. And uh, this talk is actually a use case to export also metrics to OpenTelemetry. So basically, is uh, Kepler, the first premise is to reporting the power consumption. Um, it actually reports the energy consumption, but if we use, uh, you, you can convert the energy per second in it, so we have power. And, and then it includes uh, some smaller granularity. It's not only the node power, we have the CPU, DRAM, GPU power, and also the, the total node power that we are reporting. It can work on bare metal and also on VMs and supports Prometheus and open telemetry. So the idea is it has low overhead. Uh, we have done a lot of, there, I have another talk like uh, on Wednesday that I'm going to mo with much more details about the performance, but just uh, for a general introduction here, uh, it has low overhead. It's using eBPF to collect uh, metrics from the process, uh, and it's we have measured the the, the Kepler itself uh, resource utilization is low at scale, and also the introduction of overheading the other applications that Kepler is running because it's monitoring monitoring can introduce some overhead. Uh, it's also uh, low. Um, as I mentioned, for the use case that we have the power models for uh, for uh, scenarios that we we need to we don't have access to power metrics, the sense for the sensors, and we use uh, machine learning to create the power models. So just very quickly here, the base assumption: how we distribute the power. Uh, consider that it's as basic as that. So if the the a process is using 10% of the CPU. 10% of the energy consumption of the CPU, it's related to this process. So, of course, the CPU utilization can be determined by different ways. It can be CPU time, can be, if we have harder counters, it's instructions, cache, and there are a lot of components that determine the CPU utilization. But in general, just to say that CPU utilization is linear re related to the power consumption, okay? Um, uh, yeah, so this is the Kepler architecture. So Kepler is uh, natively integrated with Kubernetes. So we watch the Kubernetes API server to get information from the pods uh, so that we can use that to aggregate metrics. So we have the pod names, container IDs from the API server. Um, from inside the node, Kepler is a demo set. It runs in each node and it's monitoring all the process, and it gets the, you know, the process ID, container ID, pod name, every, all the information. We export these metrics, and then um, the, uh, the user can aggregate the power and the, uh, or energy consumption uh, using Prometheus metrics. Uh, as I mentioned, we collect the eBPF uh, metrics. We collect the energy consumption from um, from the from the uh, from the node, if it's a bare metal node, uh, we can collect the power from the sensors. If it's a virtual machine, we need to use a trained power model. And to create a power model, we have the model server, as I mentioned before. Uh, using all of this information, we associate the energy consumption to the process and export. So there are different ways to deploy Kepler. As I mentioned, it's a bare metal, so bare metal we can have access to the sensors, and it's it's the scenario that we can uh, you know export the real metric. 
if it's a virtual machine, public cloud uh, currently doesn't expose parametrics from within the virtual machine. Maybe in the future, so we have a, a, the third use case that maybe cloud providers in the future can actually use that. Uh, but then we use the trainer power models. Of course, trainer power models has some uh, limitations. So that uh, if it's a private cloud or if maybe public cloud in the future wants to expose the power metrics, it's of course depends on the requirements from the users. If it's becoming even more something that uh, users are requesting, the cloud providers will expose that. And it's possible to run Kepler on bare metal, uh, measure, right now it's already doing that. So we can measure the energy consumption of the VMs and expose that so we can have this pass through. Uh, expose the power metrics from the VM within the VM. And then when Kubernetes is running on top of VMs, it also can get that. The advantage that it's because it doesn't need to use uh, prediction. It's using the real energy consumption that it's from the bare metal. Um, and, and then also uh, it can expose the idle power I'm going to have more details on that on the, the, the talk on Wednesday if someone is in, more interested in that. Okay, so uh, again, so not going to repeat too much that, but we have this, the, f the basic power model is what we call the ratio. The ratio is because I was telling about 10%. So it's the process energy uh, resource utilization divided by the node resource utilization. It, we have this ratio multiplied by the energy consumption. So we'll do like this 10% of CPU utilization is 10% of the energy consumption. When we call the ratio power model. And uh, the, the estimation, we can also do using a trained power model, using machine learning. So we run a set of experiments in a bare metal node, collects all the resource utilization, energy consumption from different resource and do some regression analysis, as, as simple as that. So, and using different algorithms, they have different uh, occurrence, and the one that has better occurrence, we store that online, and then people can use this. Also, Kepler is flexible, so the power model is, it's, it's specific to the hardware, isn't it? So each CPU model has different power consumption curve, so we support officially some CPU models, but we also ask for the community to help with that because we cannot provide for all kind of CPU models and uh, ask for the community to also help to create power models for different CPU and architectures. CPU, CPU models, CPU architectures, sorry. Okay, uh, the, the Kepler model server is, is again, so it collects the metrics um, and it's using for the case of VMs that doesn't have real-time power model metrics, so we need to predict that in somehow. And it's also uh, provides, uh, you know, uh, the power for uh, workloads. So basically, for the model server, we actually have the CPU and the run energy consumption. Um, that it receives the parameters as CPU architecture, as I mentioned, it's something important. If CPU architecture is not available, it will use some generic power model. But needs to be aware that a generic power model not necessarily fits all types of CPU. So it's something that needs to be, uh, uh, ha must have some stud. So it's uh, the the, the model server actually is get metrics from Prometheus. It's, it's run, it's uh, not run with the main Kepler, the uh, demon set that it's running. It's something used for training. It's another uh, demon that it's running there, collects metrics from Prometheus, do the training and export the power model. And then Kepler can download this power model later on and use to estimate that. Um, so as I mentioned, Kepler is not only for Kubernetes, especially for the edge case, it can run standalone, and then it can be, for example, installed with RPM uh, in, on the Linux server, on the Red Hat machines, and it can be deployed on, uh, on VM to 
also to the to uh, on bare metal or VMs in the standalone mode to collect the power metrics and export that. Okay, so um, I'm going to you know give the talk. That's the talking to Sally now, right now. Yep. Thank you, Sally. <laughs> so yeah, I I started working with um, Kepler um, well at the edge. Um, I was doing work on MicroShift, uh, which is a low footprint Kubernetes um, just platform um, meant for the edge, um, running on Red Hat Device Edge. Uh, so uh, at the edge, uh, Prometheus and Grafana, those are often too expensive, um, especially at, at the far edge. So um, I, I knew that OpenTelemetry would be a good fit. Um, OpenTelemetry can act as, as a stand-in really for Prometheus, um, and then also as a um, connection point um, where you can connect to the central data hub that has your full observability stack with, with a Prometheus or Prometheus data source and Grafana. Kepler comes with a really um, wonderful Grafana dashboard. Uh, so yeah, um, Open Telemetry is a, a really great project. It has brought the whole observability community together in the CNCF and uh, a lot of integrations um, are possible. Um, so, yeah, like I said, it's, um, it, it provides a, a vendor agnostic way to collect um, metrics and, well, all telemetry, but um, y you, may, you may funnel off to an observability vendor, but you don't have to. And at the edge, um, you might want to, you know, collect all of your Kepler um, data and then aggregate it onto, like I said, a remote central location where you can... Um, process and manage it. Um, so a Kepler can run, I mean, the collector can run as a sidecar to any, um, uh, the Kepler daemon set, which is how I run it in MicroShift. But it also um, the collector can run as a container with the system D. It can run as an RPM. It's, it's really flexible. We, you all know this, you're at own, uh, Observability Day. Um, so yeah, um, currently Kepler is instrumented for Prometheus, and and uh, in the collector config that I'll show, I use the um, Prometheus receiver. But I there there is some work recently where you can um, use OT, the the Prometheus receiver was um, embedded in the um, the S SDK, and so you can directly use the OTLP metrics now. But for now, it's the Prometheus receiver. Um, so the idea is uh, allowing that single connection point from each of your edge devices to funnel up your um, metrics to the, the central observability stack where it's more full featured and um, yeah. So the, the uh, centralized dashboarding is, is an initiative going on with the Kepler project now. And so we do have a demo. Do you think it'll just play? Let's try it. Let's try it. It's, it doesn't have sound, so I got to watch it. Wait, I'm going to play full screen, and then we just hit um, escape when it's done. All right, I got to be fast. So this is MicroShift, and um, this is what you get out of the box of MicroShift is some, some open shifty, nice stuff like storage, DNS, the service CA operator, and it's OpenShift um, 413. And then I just have the one workload, Kepler, because um, that's what I was showing. Um, here, I'm taking all of the manifests from this, this write-up tutorial that is in Red Hat ET that I put together. Um, I'm running it as a side sidecar in the Kepler daemon set. Works really well. Um, what's next? Oh, I set up mutual TLS, which was um, a bonus if you follow that tutorial. Uh, okay, so um, then I also set it up uh, as an RPM running just on a, a local, uh, an edge machine, rel based. And you can see I'm using the Prometheus receiver, and the exporter is going off to a Kubernetes cluster that has a full featured observability stack. And... Um, Yep, there it is in all of its glory. It's a beautiful. I love pretty colors. That's why I love. <laughs> That's why I love Kepler because I love the dashboard. Yeah, you got to have that at the end. Um, and and you can see that all of the metrics were um, also explorable with the Prometheus data source. No 
The last thing you want is for your, your tool to monitor your carbon footprint to be, um, be creating too much of a carbon load. It's good to keep it small. Yeah, so as I mentioned, we have another talk about the Kepler. It will be the project update and deep dive. Uh, it will actually discuss what we have done this year, what we are going to do in the future. So if you are available, uh, please join the next, talk, the next talk. It's in the main, uh, you know, Kubicon talk. Questions? Sorry, she's, she gave me the nod, so I just kind of went with it. Um, so something I thought might be interesting is to go into the I use think it's cases off that the you mic, would, What's that? I think it's off this mic. Is it? I think it's, I think oh, it's, it's on. It okay, sounds like sorry. it's on. Do I just need to be really loud or maybe taller? Um, so I was going to say, I think what would have been really interesting is going into the use cases that you would actually see from IoT. I saw, like, the dashboard for all of half a second. I saw there was like CO2 emissions that you're looking at and, and that sort of thing. But I would have been really interested to see, yeah, what are the use cases for using OTEL with IoT devices on the edge? Yeah, I can, I can answer. Um, I have an idea. So uh, it, besides like the goodwill of saving the earth, um, a lot of countries and, uh, and governments are mandating that you report your carbon footprint or your carbon usage. or That's what we call it. It's, it's not exactly carbon it's an estimation of carbon but but so that's that's one reason i think that enterprise um, ai companies they're 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 going to mandate it and so they need that that's probably and it, it can save you money by by optimizing your power usage you know saving the the life of you know extending the life of your hardware devices stuff like that but mostly it's to save the earth Uh, did it, that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. So my question is whether um, you can make a relation between the power usage and um, the green energy from the cloud providers. I mean, um, is it greener to run on this provider or on that provider? Can you make that relation or? Yeah, we can do that. So, um, of course, this depends on the, the information that the cloud providers are providing. So, um, it's there are some possible estimation. To, we know the data center locations, it? so that you, we can know where the application is running, uh, and there are some assumptions for that. But the real energy source that comes from the data center, it's not open right now. So the cloud providers are not exposing that. But we can have some assumptions. Again, so we will be not 100%, but we can have assumptions. Right? For example, if, if some, uh, we know that some locations, it's more energy efficient, isn't it? Like a, it's colder environment, things like that. So we can have this kind of assumptions. And, and uh, US has, there are, some, if there are some websites in US that we can see more or less the energy source for regions, for example, states, locations, and then we also can have assumption for that. But if the cloud providers in the future expose more information, then we'll be more accurate in this analysis. Got it. And I, I do have another question, if I may. <laughs> and that is, um, I love this topic, so, and I think it is very important to start, not start, I mean, it's too late for us to start discussing that right now. Um, but, um, how confident are we on the numbers that we have there? I know it's all estimations, but um, how close do we think we are from the estimations to the actual number? Have yeah. we ran some like kilowatt uh, device and some of the workloads and, and see you know, whether they actually relate to the estimations? Yeah, right. So for the energy consumption, uh, we verify that. So we have, the, the, for example, the bare metal. We have the real energy consumption that's coming from sensors. And if we are in the bare metal, we just get this data and split that to the process. So it's the real energy consumption that we are export. For the VMs that it's a power model, it, we have also verified that for, again, for a given CPU uh, model, if we are using the right model for this, it's accurate. Um, 
for the CO2, as I mentioned for you, we need, we need metrics, you know, we need to know what the energy source for that. So right now it's some general estimation, but it needs to be improved, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so question on the model itself and then the serving of the model. Um, for one, are you like using platforms to serve the model and are you creating inference model sets? And then two, I don't know if you can hear me. Um, Two is like, are you using GPU-driven modeling right now? For the uh, right. So um, we. So, so can you can you repeat the question for the models for? Yeah, if we're using inference-based modeling, right? So if it's prepackaged served models that we can get yes. out there, and then are we using GPU computing? Okay. Because uh, inference-based models we don't necessarily always have to. Okay. Yeah. Right? So the power models are for CPU, DRAM, and the node power uh, related to that. For the GPUs, right now, the use case that we have uh, is we have total access to the GPU. So for example, uh, I, I can say I'm, uh, in the IBM Cloud uh, point of view, we ex fully expose its GPU pass-through. So we have access to the power consumption of the GPU. And we use the not you know, power models for GPU. We get that energy consumption and split uh, based on the GPU utilization of the process, we split the energy consumption between the process. Okay, yeah, sorry, I guess I didn't phrase my question great. I'm talking about the actual model itself that you're running. Right? Okay. There's a cost to that model that could ah, actually right. technically be more than the observability that you're getting, uh -huh. right? Especially if it's GPU-driven models and you have large data sets. Right. right? That's expensive model. So inference models, they're CPU-driven, tiny, compartmentalized, right, typically. So are you creating the modeling that you're using for the platform as inference sets in the future, is my question. Yeah, so um, the, the model that we are creating, uh, if I understood, so we are saying that the model that has been trained on GPUs, there's the AI models in it. So our model is very simple and lightweight to train mm -hmm. the, for the Kepler itself. But I understand that the energy consumption for you know AI workloads, we are measuring that. So the CPU, what's the CPU part? Uh, energy consumption from the CPU part, the energy consumption for the GPU part, as I was mentioned, we have power mods for that. Then the, we measure the overhead of Kepler, but uh, I didn't plot the energy consumption of Kepler, but I mentioned the overhead of Kepler is very low, is expected to using low CPU utilization, so it's also using low energy, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, got you. Got you. Yeah. All right, thank you. Thank you.